today's DIPC seminar. It's a great pleasure to have Tobias Gas from uh, <coughs> Institute of Photonic Science, uh, ICFO in Barcelona as a speaker. Uh, um, let me briefly introduce Tobias. He <coughs> studied in uh, his youth from Germany. He studied physics in Freiburg uh, in Belo-Horizonte in Brazil and in Berlin. Um, and he did his PhD in the group of Marjorie Levenstein at, at ICFO, uh, where he graduated <coughs> with a thesis on um, uh, ultra cold atoms in artificial uh, uh, gauge fields in 2013. Uh, and then was a postdoc first at ICFO for a couple of years and then at the Joint Quantum Institute in College Park, Maryland. Uh, and in 2019, he returned to ICFO uh, with a uh, Lakaisha Junior Leader uh, Fellowship. And his research has, uh, is, has been on many aspects of, of the quantum many body physics that one can study with cold thread app. Thread trapped atoms and, and mainly called uh, ultra cold trapped uh, atoms and uh, quantum simulations and, and basically many body effects one can uh, investigate there. And so that's also talk uh, topic of today's talk where he will speak about synthesizing topological phases in atomic and electronic quantum matter. So welcome Tobias and please stage is yours. Uh, thank you, thank you Giza for the introduction. Thank you for the invitation also and, and thank you to everyone for being here as, and listening to me as I speak about uh, my favorite topic, which are topological phases in quantum uh, physics. And uh, in particular, I will speak about, uh, give an overview about different ways of how we can control such topological phases in different types of systems, in particular in, in atomic systems, but also in the end, I will look a little bit in electronic matter, in particular graphene. Um, so let me start with the concept of topology uh, by looking at this uh, Bressel, yeah. I mean, apart from topology, it, it has, I mean, in general, it has a very nice shape and it has also a symmetry, for instance. Here we have this mirror symmetry. And um, symmetries are, as you know, interesting in physics. In particular, uh, we think about symmetries and what happens when they are broken. Yeah? And indeed, that can happen very easily. Symmetries break spontaneously, or we can also, I mean, just squeeze the Bressel a bit, and then this mirror symmetry has disappeared. Yet, there's another property, property related to the shape of the pretzel which has not changed. And this is the number of, of holes through this pretzel. This is a, a topological property. And uh, these topological properties uh, are very robust against such deformations. And that uh, makes topological properties very interesting, in particular when it comes to quantum systems, which are typically fragile. Uh, but with uh, topology, we have uh, a, a way to get uh, robust features in quantum systems. Now, where do we have topology in quantum systems? The, the paradigm of a topological quantum system are uh, the quantum Hall systems, which have been discovered in 1980 by von Klitzing et al. And in particular, they stand out through a very robust transport behavior, there is this Hall transport, which is perpendicular to the uh, applied electric field direction. And it turns out that the conductance or resistance in this transverse direction uh, takes these quantized values where it does not change if you vary the magnetic field. So we have here very robust features. And these features indeed can be understood uh, from the topology in, in such a system, which is uh, enforced by the magnetic field. The magnetic field uh, perpendicular to the sample uh, forces the electrons in a semi-classical picture on some chiral motion, which makes the system behave like an insulator in the bulk. Whereas at the edge, this chirality forces the electrons to go in only one direction. And, and, and that is what, what uh, leads to this robust transport um, property. Uh, one can also understand this then a, min, a bit more uh, uh, mathematically. One can define in particular a topological number just as in the pretzel, so a bit more abstract. So we can define this churn number here as an integral over uh, the Barry curvature. These UKs are the wave functions and, um, and that is an integer quantum. Uh, that's an integer uh, number which um, was shown then by these people, Taulis, Komoto, Nightingale, and Denise, to take, first of all, non-zero values in these quantum Hall systems. But uh, most importantly, the uh, linear response conductance, um, the core conductance from Kubo formula, 
is found to be uh, given by that churn number only proportional uh, by this fundamental quantum of conductance. So it's really uh, striking that no um, properties related to the geometry or the, uh, the I mean, the disorder in the system really matter here in this formula, just uh, simply the topology uh, is responsible for the Hall conductance. And um, yeah, now this, this very interesting feature which we have in a quantum Hall system, so this is actually a feature which happens even on a non-interacting level. Now imagine you have such a topological band structure on the non-interacting -inter level plus interactions then even more interesting things can happen. In particular, it can happen that very exotic quasi particles, so called anions, can emerge from such a combination. Now, what is an anion? It, it should be opposed to the particles which we know from our three dimensional world, which are either bosons or fermions, characterized through their behavior under, under exchange. So the wave function can either uh, remain the same or get a, a minus sign uh, under exchange. Um, in the case of fermions. And that, uh, that um, is understood from the point of view that the double exchange process should be uh, the same as an identity operation. And you can uh, understand that topologically because a double exchange of two, so we have two particles, identical particles sitting in A and B. So a double exchange means nothing else than moving one particle around the other. And we can do that on, on that loop, but we can also do it on, on, on that loop and we can actually contract this loop away so that it shrinks to, to a point where nothing happens. And that really demonstrates that the double exchange is nothing else than identity operation. But this argument apparently is really um, depending on the, the, on, on the existence of a, of a third dimension. If we would try to do the same argumentation in a, in a two dimensional plane, it does not work because if we would try to shrink this loop away, we would at some point hit with one particle against the others. So we have a singularity there, which, which prevents us from, uh, from contracting this loop. And therefore the double exchange is non-trivial and accordingly also the single exchange. Uh, it does not uh, necessarily just lead to a plus or minus sign in the wave function, but it can, for instance, produce an arbitrary phase, U1 phase, or uh, and, and even in cases where we have a degeneracy in, in, the, in the ground state, uh, an exchange of particles can lead to a rotation of the state vector within uh, this degenerate manifold. In that case, we have then a, a, a non-commuting uh, operation and a rotation um, describing the exchange. And therefore, these uh, particles then are called non-abelians or non-abelian anions. And they are, in particular, very uh, relevant in the context of, of quantum computing uh, with topological um, or topologically protected quantum computing. Um, so these anions, abelian and non-abelian ones, they occur in so-called fractional quantum hall systems, which uh, in contrast to the, fract uh, to the quantum hall systems, which I had on the previous slide uh, from so these fractional quantum Hall systems are um, similar from the phenomenological point of view that we, in the sense that we also have quantized transport uh, with the only difference now that the, that the churn number or the Hall conductance takes not, not just integer values, but also fractional values. And that, that seems to be a little difference only, but it's really an important difference because uh, if you notice that the churn number is actually given by the filling factor of the Landau level, that means if you have an integer filling, uh, then there is a huge gap on the single particle level to the next available state. Whereas if you have fractional filling, uh, there is a huge degeneracy on the single particle level. And therefore in the integer quantum Hall effect, interactions really play no role because of this huge single particle gap. Whereas in the, in the, many, uh, in the fractional quantum Hall case, interactions are really um, the only uh, term in the Hamiltonian which, which uh, matters. Uh, so we have always strong interactions, even if they are weak in a sense. And then these interactions give rise to, or can give rise to anti-correlated many-body phases, uh, many-body wave functions. The first of those which has been found was the Laughlin wave function wrote, written down by Laughlin in, in 1983. Um, and it is actually a simple wave function uh, that the the core of that wave function is, is this red term. It's, a, it's, it's an anti-correlation it, and it strongly anti-correlates 
particles pairwise here, uh, the sets are the positions of the particles in the complex um, plane or in the 2D plane. And uh, the, uh, the striking feature of this Laughlin wave function is the following. If you uh, excite this wave function by producing zeros, yeah, you have the Laughlin wave function, you multiply it with these prefactors which produce a zero in position W1 and W2. So you have two quasi holes now in this, in this state. Uh, if you exchange this uh, positions W1 and W2, this wave function acquires a phase uh, which is uh, which has here this phase angle alpha, which is not plus or minus one, but uh, it's given by the filling factor one over Q. So it's a fractional number. So we have anionic behavior of these quasi holes. And that, uh, I mean, that can be seen actually, I mean, as, as Robert Laughlin already um, described it when he wrote down the wave function, he used a so-called plasma analogy, which is valid in the thermodynamic limit. Uh, the, looked at actually this wave function for very small systems also in this paper here from 2012 uh, where only of, of five or, or six particles and really analytically calculated uh, this this prefactor and and for even for these small systems one can uh, observe this anionic behavior so which means that uh, that a microscopic realization of the Laughlin state would be sufficient really to uh, to have already uh, um, anionic uh, excitations, uh, which is of course interesting in, from the point of view of, of quantum simulations, which are not, not always in the thermodynamic limit. Um, yeah, with that introduction, let me give you the outline of my talk. I want to uh, speak about uh, synthesizing, first of all, fractional quantum Hall physics in, um, in, in synthetic matter, in particular in atomic matter. So to synthesize it, we have to engineer the Hamiltonian, then we have to prepare the ground state of this Hamiltonian. And these are actually difficult, two difficult tasks, but then there, is a, there are rewards waiting for us. If we achieve that, we can get to enhance detection opportunities, in particular, the detection of anionic behavior. Uh, but we can also try to engineer new and maybe exotic uh, fractional quantum Hall phases. I will in particular show you some results on a, what we call a fractional Wigner crystal. And, and then in, in the second part of my talk, I will uh, briefly um, look also on uh, synthesization methods applied not to um, synthetic matter, so, but to electronic matter, so samples which you can touch. And through optical driving, I will show you that we can make a synthetic bilayer out of a monolayer graphene, and that the synthetic graphene bilayer supports very interesting non abelian. Um, uh, phases, uh, in particular Fibonacci, uh, supporting Fibonacci onions. Um, yeah, so uh, first uh, about this synth um, synthetic fractional quantum Hall state, so uh, which, um, I mean, could be done in, in cold atoms. Also, there are attempts to do that with photons. Uh, these particles are uh, all charge neutral, so uh, with the magnetic field being a crucial ingredient to quantum Hall physics, that's kind of a problem because charge neutral particles won't see uh, the field. But there have been many, many uh, ways of, of synthesizing the effect of a magnetic field for charge neutral particles. In particular, there have been optical techniques, um, for instance, laser dressing or laser assisted tunneling in optical lattices. And, and these approaches have, have been really realized in experiments for more than 10 years. Now, um, there are even older techniques which are more mechanical, uh, in particular, uh, shaking of optical lattices and, and rotating of optical lattices or, or of just the, the overall trap. And, and that is, in fact, the oldest approach towards artificial gauge fields is rotation. The, First experiments with rotating uh, with with vortices in Bose-Einstein condensates were really um, done in, in in the 90s already, uh, just by rotating uh, the trap and, and that then you have a Coriolis force um, which um, which mimics uh, the Lorentz force uh, acting on on charged particles. Um, 
so so um, there have been uh, many uh, so successful um, uh, ways of producing artificial gauge fields. Most of them, however, happen really in, in single particle scenarios, which I mean are, are interesting. Certainly, there are edge states, there are churn numbers, there's also this fractal energy spectrum, the Hoff said the butterfly. Uh, many interesting phenomena happening happen on the single particle level, but um, the many body level um, still is, is a challenge. Only these two last experiments here actually deal with more or deal with, let's, let's call it the many body regime or so. Uh, so the, that experiment here has never been published except in archive. So it's kind of um, suspicious. And, and the, the, the second um, experiment here in, in, in John Simon's group in, in Chicago was published last year in Nature, but it deals with a system of only two photons. So I would not get called that really many body, but at least it's beyond uh, single particle physics. Um, so what is uh, the problem with this, uh, with this many body um, uh, scenario? It's actually, I mean, it's not uh, a problem related to the engineering of the Hamiltonian because indeed the Hamiltonian ingredients we have. We have the synthetic gauge fields, for instance, through rotation. We also have uh, the interactions, at least uh, on, if, on the level of cold atoms, interactions are, are for free. Yeah? And so if you, if you have a gas of bosonic atoms, we have, for instance, contact interactions. Um, so the Hamiltonian is, is there. However, having the Hamiltonian is not the same as having the ground set of the Hamiltonian. And, and that is uh, that is the challenge preparing then this, the many body system in this fractional uh, quantum hall crown state. And I, I, I can, I want briefly, want to briefly describe this problem. So uh, by looking how we can produce a Laughlin state in a rotating gas of, uh, of boson, bosonic atoms. Um, the rotation on the single particle level produces this Landau level spectrum. So we have single particle levels characterized through two quantum numbers, n, this is the Landau level index, and m, this is an orbital index related to uh, the angular momentum of the particle. And, and then uh, we want to um, make the Landau level flat, so we have to make this, that this term disappears, so we have to rotate so fast that the capital omega, the rotation frequency, compensates this small omega, omega which is the trapping frequency. And then if we achieve this flatness of the Landau level, then any small uh, repulsive interaction uh, will lead to anti-correlations. It will produce vortices uh, in, in the first place, but later on uh, vortex lattices or and finally fractional quantum hall uh, liquids. And that is illustrated here in this figure for, for bosons. If you uh, look here at, at the, uh, at a, at, at the system as a function of the rotation frequency. For slow rotation, we still get a Bose-Einstein condensate, then we incre increase the rotation frequency, then a vortex forms, the angular momentum jumps, then more vortices form, or I mean, there are intermediate phases, vortex lattice phases, uh, uh, until you reach in the end, the Laughlin state. And, um, and these different phases now, they are, uh, separated from each other through, uh, through a true level crossing. Uh, and uh, so the, these are not avoided crossings, these are, these are true crossings protected by the rotational symmetry. So if you want actually that the system picks up this angular momentum when we increase the rotation, we have to first of all uh, destroy the rotational symmetry so that, that a gap opens at these crossings. So we have to, uh, for instance, you have to deform the trapping potential. And then if you do that, um, we, we get a, an, an energy landscape like that. So this is the anisotropy and this is the rotation frequency and, and the colors are, are the gap. So we, and blue means there is a closing of the gap. So we have these three level crossings here, but if you go to finite anisotropies, you can avoid these level crossings. And in that way, we find a path which goes uh, around these level crossings from the condensate to the Laughlin state. And since now on, along this path, the gap is always open, we can actually adiabatically go from the condensate to the Laughlin state. 
And um, in that adiabatic path has already been discussed in uh, almost 20 years back in this paper. We revisited this problem recently in, in, in an archive paper and found uh, that indeed it can be done much faster than it was reported there. We um, did it in, 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 in about at least 10 times faster uh, time scale than in that paper. And uh, in particular, we did it together with this, um, with Christoph Weitenberg from Hamburg, who is an experimentalist who wants to do such an experiment. And, and um, with that time scale, we, we found now, I mean, he's kind of confident that this will work. So it depends, the, the total time depends still on the trapping frequency, but for let's say realistic values, maybe one can uh, reach the Laughlin state in, with, uh, with a, almost one fidelity within 20 milliseconds. And, and that, that seems really feasible. So there, there is hope that in the near uh, future, we will maybe see these Laughlin droplets in, in cold atoms. And then of course the question arises, what can we do with these Laughlin states uh, in uh, cold atoms? And one of the big uh, challenges in fractional quantum Hall physics is really the, the detection of anionic properties. Uh, so there have been uh, some uh, um, uh, uh, successes last year actually with electronic systems and with interference measurements in electronic systems, which for the first time after 40 years after the discovery of, of quantum Hall effect for the first time there was a rel of relative good evidence that actually this fractional quantum statistics really exists and, uh, and I mean even even with that experiment now, I, I, th I think there is still really room to, to further exploration of, of this anionic behavior. And uh, this is uh, one um, thing we, we could do with our um, systems. We could in particular put into such a system impurity atoms, impurity particles, which uh, repel the atoms from the liquid and in that way create quasi holes in the liquid. And, and uh, automatically, the, the impurities then would bind to these quasi holes yeah, through this repulsive interaction. That's an idea which has been discussed in, in, in the last few years in several papers. And it has, in particular, also discussed in, in the first paper here that the, um, the impurities feel a screened magnetic field, screened by the liquid, which leads to a, a rescaled magnetic length. Uh, this is the magnetic length scale. Now it depends on the filling factor nu of the liquid. And what, what we then uh, argued is that this also then would uh, renormalize the effective Landau level wave function for the impurity. So that would take this expression uh, as opposed to the normal Landau level wave function, which is just uh, this one. And, and that has a consequence. If you look at the angular momentum of a particle described by such a wave function, uh, it would be given by this expression here. So it would also depend on the filling of the, of the liquid. Whereas uh, for the normal Landau level wave function, I mean, the angular momentum is just the quantum number M. Um, um, and I mean, so that is kind of a mean field argument, which, which we have used here. We can also actually do this on a really true many body level. We can write down the many body wave function also for the Laughlin state with a quasi hole and the impurity bound to it in its M excited state. And then we can integrate out the, the liquid and uh, evaluate the angular momentum of the impurity and we exactly obtain this formula, which we already had in from this mean field argumentation. So we have these effective single particle levels, but now the interesting thing uh, happens when we have more than one impurity, because then, uh, I mean, then you can have fermionic uh, impurities, which would, a fer which would fill a Fermi C. Yeah? So then the total angular momentum should be the sum over different levels for yeah, NB is the number of impurities. Uh, or we could have bosonic impurities. So then they would Bose condense in the lowest level. So we would have that value. Or uh, we could have anionic impurities. And indeed, since the impurities bind to the quasi holes, we expect them to be anionic. And then we should have something in between the Fermi and the Bose value. And if we look at the numerical data, again, obtained from the exact many body wave functions 
for NB impurities in a, in a Laughlin liquid at a filling factor one half or one third or whatever, uh, we um, see that for fermionic impurities, you would expect this behavior as this dashed line or um, for bosonic impurities, you would be, uh, expect that uh, scaling by the lower dashed line, whereas our data points really lie, lie in the middle and they follow this, this um, brown line, which is uh, really given through an, anti, uh, through an interpolation between these two limiting cases with uh, the interpolation parameter alpha being uh, the statistical parameter of the anions, which is uh, for the Laughlin case, exactly the filling factor. And so that means that actually we can extract the, uh, the statistical parameter of the anions just from the uh, angular momentum of the impurities, which we can obtain from a density measurement of the impurities. So there is no braiding needed. There is no interference measurement needed, just a uh, measurement of the density, which is certainly a very simple uh, approach towards measuring that, um, that quantity. And then one can also uh, even generalize this to non-abelian states. Uh, in particular, we have been looking in, in that archive paper this month on, on, arc, uh, on Pafian states. Uh, in the case of a Pafian liquid, the statistical parameter of the quasi holes is not uh, just the filling factor, but it in particular, it has this shift uh, term, which depends on the parity of the number of particles in the liquid. Yeah? And, and now if you look at the impurity angular momentum as a function of the liquid size, we have here this clear even odd effect, which, uh, which really uh, is uh, the demonstration of uh, the non-abelian nature uh, of this Pfaffian state. So this is, uh, so again, so this non-abelian property can then also seen from, uh, from density, density measurements of the impurities. Um, yeah, uh, these are some possible ways of really, um, I mean, performing novel um, detection methods on uh, fractional quantum hall liquids. Another opportunity which we have in, in these um, synthetic um, fractional quantum hall um, systems is to engineer exotic behavior, which we may not necessarily have in, in electronic nature. Um, and one of one one general question which arises in the context of uh, of topological matter is the following. Uh, so we know that topo topology can be a source of, of topological order, so it can give rise to ordered phases of matter. Um, but we also, of course, know the old concept of symmetry breaking, which is another mechanism which can give rise to order. And, and, and one question which arises is whether there can be a combination of both mechanisms at the same time so that we have topological and symmetry broken uh, systems simultaneously. And indeed, uh, there have been some experiments in the last years uh, demonstrating that a fractional quantum hall uh, liquid actually can undergo a symmetry, symmetry breaking transition towards a pneumatic uh, phase. Um, which uh, at least in this first experiment did not happen spontaneously so, but it was enforced through pressure, uh, but still, so we reach um, a coexistence of uh, symmetry breaking and, and topology, but it, these examples really, uh, I mean, are the only ones I'm familiar with in, in nature, so it's, it's a rare combination. And what, what we found as we looked at our system of bosonic, uh, atoms in the um, in the fractional quantum hall regime is the following. So we have been looking at this with the people from Gorshkop group in Maryland who really um, know very well how to um, use Rydberg tracing to, uh, to do engineering of interactions in such systems. And in particular, they can then engineer the uh, Haldane pseudopotentials which characterize the the shape of the interactions in such a in, in the quantum hall regime, and so as we go from from a system which I mean 
which you have only contact interaction. So this is here in the in where both U2 and U0, uh, U4 are zero. Then we have the Laughlin liquid. And as, as we introduce uh, finite range interactions, we undergo different symmetry breaking transitions. So there are different crystal crystalline phases. So this is the Wigner crystal phase, which we have here. There are bubble phases um, where particles cluster and form a crystal. Or there are also striped phases. This is here. Uh, what people have not been looking at before, so is what happens if you make only U4 large while U2 is kept relatively small. And that's a very exotic type of interaction, which in nature, I mean, you would probably not find because if usually the, it, it, there is some decay. So U4 is typically small, uh, smaller than U2. But if you, if you, synthetically make it strong, you reach here this phase, which, which has this structure. It's also a crystalline phase. But now, in, in contrast to this Wigner crystal, we have twice as many peaks. We have, for, for, for every particle in the system, we get two crystal peaks. So we have a combination of fractionalization. So the particles uh, fractionalize, as they do in the Laughlin liquid, uh, where it's filling one half. Uh, but at the same time, we also then uh, reach here um, uh, obviously a, a symmetry broking uh, configuration. So uh, also, I mean, it's it's not totally clear uh, what happens in this phase. I think it's a it's a relative um, good candidate to look uh, at if one is interested in this combination of symmetry breaking and uh, topological order. Um, yeah. Now let me let me switch uh, finally to the um, electronic systems, in particular uh, graphene systems. Uh, there have been, I mean, many ways to to um, change the behavior, the topological behavior of electronic systems in the past, particularly through optical driving. Uh, there has been the early proposal of Oka and Aoki to make a topological insulator out of graphene. And that has been realized also last year in, in Hamburg in Cavallari's uh, lab. Um, we also have this archive paper where we um, suggest uh, a variation of this experiment because so far, what produces this topological insulator uh, behavior is um, breaking of time reversal symmetry through the polarization, the circular polarization of the light. Uh, now, what we showed theoretically is that one can also use linearly polarized light, so uh, which does not break the time reversal symmetry, but then one should use a spatial structure, a spatial uh, twist, yeah. Uh, which uh, can um, then achieve this time reversal symmetry breaking and also give rise to, to um, then open this topological gap in the system. Uh, but that is actually not what I want to talk. Today, I wanted to talk about something interacting again uh, in, the, in the fractional quantum hall regime. Um, then we already have, uh, so we assume that we have graphene already in the quantum hall regime through an external magnetic field, uh, then we have Landau levels. And now we can optically couple these Landau levels. So, uh, and we can selectively couple because of um, the non equidistant Landau level spacing in graphene. So, we can select two Landau levels which we couple. And that then can be interpreted as like a synthetic bilayer, each Landau level representing one layer. And the, the coupling, so the Rabi. Uh, frequency is like a tunneling between the layers. And the, the tuning delta is, is like a chemical potential between uh, the two layers. And I mean, these are terms which, of course, you also have in a real bilayer. But in this synthetic bilayer, you can obviously very easily tune these parameters, which is not possible in a, on, at least not easily possible in a, in a real bilayer system. That is one advantage, but uh, the the other thing uh, is that also the interactions in such a synthetic bilayer are different uh, from the ones which we have, which we would have in a, in a, in a physical bilayer. And again, we can look at these Haldane pseudopotentials, which in a physical bilayer should just monotonic or 
just do just monotonically, monot monotonically uh, decay. Yeah. Whereas in the synthetic bilayer, uh, it can happen, depending on which Landau levels you couple, that uh, this um, behavior is non-monotonic. And uh, in, in that case, we would get here an a, a energetic favor towards singlet formation in this uh, at zero relative angular momentum between the two particles. So, um, and now this, this, um, this shape, which we get uh, in, in the synthetic bilayer then uh, on the many body level leads to very exotic uh, phases, in particular, the fractional quantum hall phase of, uh, in, of such a bilayer uh, turns out to be a Fibonacci phase. This is a non-abelian uh, um, phase, which, um, which should be contrasted so from other non-abelian phases, like for instance, this Fafian phase, which I had mentioned earlier, which is so to say the, the common non-abelian phase, and which is also um, equivalent then in, in, in the, the, the Anians are equivalent to the Majorana fermions, um, which, uh, which um, people actually like, I mean, which Microsoft, for instance, wants to use to build the topological quantum computer. But the, actually, these, these Majorana fermions and, and the Tafian Anians, they have the disadvantage that they do not allow for universal quantum computing. So not all the gates which you um, would need in a universal quantum computer can be done uh, topologically through braiding, which means that, that these systems will always have also some non-topological elements uh, when you want to build a universal quantum computer out of it, and that is a source of error. And the simplest non-abelian anions which really uh, would allow for universal quantum computer uh, computing are indeed these uh, uh, Fibonacci anions, which, uh, however, are really extremely rare in, in nature. We do not really know where they exist, but um, this could be a way to get them really. Now, um, of course, I mean, the, it's always kind of tricky to, to identify uh, these phases through finite size computations. So we have here really uh, uh, done a lot of effort in, 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 in characterizing this fractional quantum Hall phase. And from the, for instance, from the edge counting in the entanglement spectrum, we clearly get a fingerprint of this Fibonacci phase. Also, one can write down the parent Hamiltonian of the Fibonacci anions and then adiabatically connect it to our Hamiltonian and there is no gap closing. So it really suggests that, that we are in, in, this, uh, in, this, uh, in the same phase. So um, there is really good hope that, that it could be a strategy to, to realize Fibonacci onions. And yeah, uh, with that, uh, I'm at the end of my talk. Thank you. Uh, let me briefly summarize. So, I mean, what I've been talking about is to really produce fractional quantum hall Hamiltonians either in fully synthetic matter like cold atom systems or in electronic matter using some synthetic or synthesizing features like optical driving. And we can then either get conventional Hamiltonians, which support like the Laughlin states, for instance, or more exotic Hamiltonians, which would support non-abelian phases or maybe even this fractional Rigner crystal phase. Um, the next challenge then is the preparation of the ground set of this Hamiltonian. I have only speak, spoken in this context about preparing really the uh, ground set of the Laughlin state. Uh, how to do that for these uh, more exotic Hamiltonians that could be more tricky actually. So it's an, it's an open uh, problem. And then uh, once you have the ground state, of course, then the next thing is detection. I've also only spoken a bit about detection of abelian anions and, and non-abelian anions in the context of, of uh, easing anions. Uh, again, for, for Fibonacci anions, for instance, this is another question how to really to detect that, uh, which I have not been, um, uh, well, I'm, I have nothing to say about it because I have not studied it yet, uh, but it would be an interesting subject, certainly. And um, yeah, so then thank you for listening. And, and I also want to thank my collaborators on these projects, which are here at ICFO and uh, JQI most, mostly. Thank you.
Thank you, Tobias, uh, for the nice presentation. Can you hear me? Yes. Or, yes, yeah, yes. Okay. So, <clears throat> yeah, very nice uh, talk. Um, so, um, <clears throat> we have time for for questions. If um, please raise your hand or ask them in the chat or um, unmute yourself and ask directly. Um, and. Um, so while people think about what to ask, maybe let me start. So uh, I, had, I have several questions, but let me start with with one about this um, simulated uh, bilayer. So could you could you simulate twisted bilayer in? Uh, um, I I don't I don't know. I mean, so in. I mean you. This scheme, of course, is. I mean, you automatically uh, have a bilayer which is in a, in in a Landau level. I mean, it's it's in a quantum Hall regime. So you um, and uh, in fact, I think to produce a twisted bilayer, then one should try to um, produce a situation in which you get the Landau levels for the twisted bilayers, and they but they are very different. From the real, uh, mm. from from the normal uh, Landau levels, mm. so and and that you, I don't see how you would get it. So I mean, um, okay, so it, you, it's not enough to just sort of uh, you, you're you're not using in any way how the laser is oriented uh, relative to your <clears throat> to your uh, crystal uh, lattice, right? So it's it's really happening on the on the level of the you say well the the ground state is the, the ground state of the simulated object, not I realize a, a kind of a comparable yeah. potential or, or so. Um, so I was thinking, you know, well, okay, no, no, never mind. I, I, I don't mean, I, I mean, one, one can, I mean, one could of course try to make this, I mean, that would be maybe interesting to make the phase also, I mean, spatial dependent. Mm -hmm. And then that way, um, I mean, I don't know if that would then be like a twisted bilayer or maybe something else. Um, well, I, I mean, I thought a bit about it um, from the point of view of really having um, having the same types of, of Landau levels, mm -hmm. uh, which which you would have in a twisted bilayer, and that seems to be very. I mean, that seems to be not possible because it's it's a um, different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -oh. um, Functional behavior. All right. Okay. Um, and um, okay. I, <clears throat> let me ask a second question about. Um, you, you were saying you can sort of. I mean, atoms. Are, you use them to simulate something that we know for for electrons, but of course they are are different, and they have they might have, for example, more internal degrees of freedom, or <clears throat> or so using the atoms to simulate this this electron liquid. You could say, well, it's not. I, I have a. It's actually a liquid of of let's say multi spin, uh, so spin spin j particles, or I don't know. You might even have. I guess hopping that is anisotropic in in the lattice that you that you simulate. So, do you do you think there are um, sort of <clears throat> how much interest or how much reward you would expect from from using this additional freedom to design the constituents of your simulated matter? Mm. Yeah, I'm, I mean, so. Uh, as a, I mean, in, in, in the example which I gave uh, with this fractional Wigner crystal, I mean, certainly, I mean, tuning interactions in, in electronic systems is something which is really um, very difficult. I mean, one can, I mean, the usual ways are, I think, like putting pressure or so that mm -hmm. has a small effect in changing the pseudo and uh, and, and I mean, people in, in the electronic meta community have been looking at this, of course, also, I mean, from the theoretical point of view, there's always, I mean, you have certain phases, which you, I mean, mostly you ask about, uh, the, for instance, this five half state, which is, uh, which has the Meyer, uh, the, which has the Pafian uh, non-abelian phase, um, which, or, may have it actually, I mean, um, that 
that really depends uh, on on the pseudopotentials and, and and therefore I mean having a control over pseudopotentials is, is something um, important to um, um, synthesize the, the phase which we want and I mean of course one of the really of the phases people are most interested in are non-abelian phases non-abelian fraction quantum hall phases and um, I mean one could argue that there is this five half phase in electronic matter so maybe that's not really the um, um, there is no need to do it with cold atoms and and but if 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 you if you say this I mean then I, I, I could come with the fractional Wigner crystal. So this is something you, you, you don't have, uh, at least I don't know uh, any, anything similar happening in, in, in an electronic system. So there, I mean, there is simply more, um, there's more flexibility in uh, producing different phases. Then, and this is really, I mean, one thing. And the other thing is then simply detection. Yeah? And I mean, um, so when, when we, published this this paper on, on these impurities um, to, uh, binding to the quasi holes I mean at that time which was in I mean was in April last year at that time this this experiment um, with the interferometric measurement uh, of of the braiding um, phase of two anions has not been done that was published in, in, in I think in September only and really that was a, I mean an outstanding uh, goal after more than f f 40 years almost uh, of that we know fractional quantum hall physics still there was no clear evidence for having um, anionic um, statistics so uh, and and I think um, even with that experiment now, I think there's still, I mean, it, um, many things to, I mean, to consolidate our uh, our our um, knowledge and insight into this uh, anionic behavior, and that can certainly be done. Um, I mean, there are more opportunities, uh, or more flexible opportunities for detection if you go to synthetic systems rather than electronic ones. Mm -hmm. Okay, <clears throat> Wait, uh, thank you. Um, so I don't see any questions in the YouTube chat and also not here in the, in the chat. Any of the attendees want to raise a question? Please do so now. Um, if not, I would say um, we, we thank um, to be us again for this very interesting talk and, and discussion and uh, and close the the seminar and and then the stream so thanks a lot uh, so uh, do you have uh, a few minutes to right sure, um, sure. but we meet uh, outside yeah, or I, yes i i don't I, I don't know i think we we finish the seminar and then um maybe i kick out ev everybody who's who doesn't want to stay for the after talk uh, okay. uh, discussion and and All just right. use this link i think we have it until 1:30 or so okay um, i or or we can you i don't have a, a second uh, a second link so i think that's the that's the best so um, I, I maybe roman and, and ricardo uh, why don't you stay and um, and then we can briefly uh, briefly discuss Okay, so thank you. And um, I, um, so uh, let me first end the. Uh